continuing our look at graphs, displacement, velocity, etc., etc. So here's a velocity time graph. Now, when we look at this, I don't actually need the displacement graph because to, to go backwards is integration and we can relate integration to area and, and things like that. So if I want to know the, the change in displacement from say zero to four, then I would just do a straight integral of the velocity. However, if I wanted to do a change in distance, then I would have to break it up to above and below. So displacement, if you like, is like the integral Whereas distance is like the area, finding the area. So that one we'd have to break up zero to one, then one to three is underneath and three to four is above. Similarly with the acceleration, if you had an acceleration time graph, if you wanted to find change in velocity, then that would be the straight integral. Whereas speed, we would have to break it up into area. Now, if you want to draw, well, I've called them derivative graphs because essentially our motion graphs, derivative graphs, they're the, the same thing. The things when you're looking at, so displacement, say that's the function. The first derivative we know is velocity, second derivative, acceleration. If we're, so if we we're drawing these graphs. Now, if on the original function, so the displacement time graph, we have a stationary point. Well, that tells me the first derivative is equal to zero, so therefore we should have an x-intercept. Oh, actually, it's probably more correct to say a, a t-intercept, isn't it? Because it'd be <coughs> versus time. If it was an inflection point, an inflection point means the second derivative is equal to zero. Now, if the second derivative is equal to zero, that means the first derivative of velocity is equal to zero, so in velocity we get a stationary point. So inflection point on the original one, two derivatives down we'll have that x-intercept and one derivative we have the, the stationary point. If the curve is increasing, so the curve is going up, what does that tell us? That means the, um, the derivative is positive. So we know it's going to be above the axis. <coughs> if it was decreasing, then we know it would be below the axis. If the curve was concave up, so where the curve is concave up, that now means that the first derivative is increasing. Why does it mean that? Because concave up would mean the second derivative is positive. And if the second derivative is positive, it must have come from something that was increasing. Because we saw back there that when the function was increasing, the first derivative was positive. And when the original curve is concave down then, the first derivative of the velocity graph would be decreasing and the acceleration graph would be negative. So they're the sorts of things when you're trying to draw a graph from another one, they're the key things that we're, we're looking for. Now the type of graph. If I've got horizontal lines are a constant number, so if I was to integrate a constant number, then I'd get some constant times x. So I'll end up with an oblique line, it'll be a straight line, uh, but at some angle. If I was to differentiate it, it would just become the x-axis, because it would be zero. Differentiate the, uh, the constant, you get zero. Now if the gra graph type was a straight line at some angle, so it's now a, a linear function, when we integrate it, we would get a quadratic, so it'd be a parabola. If we were to differentiate it, we'd get a horizontal line. And if the original graph, it looks like a parabola, then when we integrate a quadratic, we get a cubic. When we differentiate a quadratic, oh, sorry, before I talk about that. And so it would inflect at the turning point. Because the parabola, we said when we got a stationary point, then on the next level down, it'll be an inflection point. And when we differentiate a parabola, so when we differentiate a quadratic, we get a, a linear function. Things to remember. So integration and is equivalent to area. We're finding the area under a curve. On a velocity graph, total area is distance, whereas total integral is displacement. And on an acceleration graph, total area is speed, 
where it's total integral is velocity. So let's have a look at some HSC questions. So 2003, velocity of the particle is given by 2 minus 4 cos t. So we've got a, a trig graph. First question, uh, at what times is the particle at rest? Well, they've given me a velocity equation. That's simply saying, hey, when's velocity equal to zero? When, when's it at rest? So we're just simply solving this little equation. So two minus four cos t. Cos is a half, it's one of our exact values. Well, we're in the first and fourth quadrants. Uh, oh, yes, pi on three. Remember, calculus and trig, the answer's in radians, not degrees. So t is pi on three and five pi on three. So in other words, 3.14, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, divided by three. So a little over one second. If I'd answered in degrees, I'd be saying, oh, after 60 seconds. So two completely different answers. So it needs to be in radians to get the right answer. So pi on three, and then again after five pi on three. What is the maximum velocity? Okay, we've got calculus we can use, but we've got the knowledge of our trig functions we can use as well. I'm not gonna bother with calculus. It's a cosine curve. This is a cosine curve. It's got an amplitude of four. It's been shifted up two. So the biggest that could ever be, well, it's gonna wind around two with an amplitude of four. The biggest it's ever gonna get is six. So I don't need to worry about calculus and find stationary points and do that. I just use my knowledge of trig. Now I'm supposed to formalize it and I probably, in reality when I'm solving this, I probably wouldn't write this down. I'd probably just do what I just did in my head and say, oh yeah, well, that's six. Uh, but I mean, theoretically, we know, what we're saying is we know the cosine curve goes in between minus four and four. Uh, therefore, if I add two, it'll go between minus two and six. So maximum velocity is, is six. Sketch the graph. All right, let's draw a trig graph. Amplitude's four, we said. Shift it up two. It's flipped upside down because it's negative. Period's two pi. So we'll mark off the divisions pi on two. There's my uh, axes. So shift it up two. Because cosine normally, we would start at the amplitude, uh, but we've flipped it. So it's now down at the bottom of the amplitude. We go up to the axis, down, up, down, up, down. There we go. 2 minus 4 cos t. Calculate the total distance travelled by the particle. Now, in this case, we've got a bit below and a bit above. If they'd ask for the total displacement, no worries, we could do the, the integral. But we have to take into account above and below for this one. So I break it up, that's our x intercept, or t intercept is it pi on three? How do I know that? Because remember back in part, let's go back there. Back in part A we found when velocity was equal to zero. So we know that's pi on three. So that's gonna be where it changes from positive to negative. So that bit will be below, the other bit will be above. Integrating uh, two, we get two t. Cosine goes to uh, sine. Subbing in, notice I've um, swapped my limits around, so I've got minus, because now the ones at the bottom are the same, so I've got minus two lots when I substitute in pi on three, and we get a lovely answer, there it is, four root three plus two pi on three uh, meters. All right, 2004 question, they've given us an acceleration time graph. Write down the times at which the velocity of the particle is a maximum. All right, now all we got is this acceleration time graph. We could work out the equations because they're nice straight lines, but I'm, I'm not going to waste time with that because the way I can interpret this, I can say, well, I know velocity is the integral of acceleration. So what is this question now saying? It's saying not when velocity is a maximum. I want to know is when is the integral a maximum? Now, the integral is area. So when is the area a maximum? All right, so it's positive, positive, positive. I get to here, it's two. This is all gonna be positive. As soon as I go past two, remember we're talking about velocity, so it's the whole integral, not area. This is gonna be a negative amount. So it's gonna start taking away 
from my positive answer. So it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So it must be at t equals 2 we would end up with that maximum. I suppose uh, another way of thinking about it, when is velocity a maximum? It would be a maximum when its derivative is equal to 0. The derivative of velocity is acceleration. So again, that draws us to t equals 2. That's when acceleration is equal to 0. Now, I've read you on the graph there so we can answer this question. At what time during the interval from 0 to 5 is it furthest away from the origin? Furthest away from the origin. So this is basically saying is when is displacement a maximum? When's displacement a maximum? Well, it's going to be a maximum when the velocity is equal to 0. So that's the derivative of, of uh, displacement. So velocity is the integral of acceleration. So now I'm going to interpret this as when is acceleration going to equal, sorry, the integral of acceleration equal to zero. So when is the area above going to equal the area below? Well, let's have a look. By symmetry, I can look at it because it's lovely straight lines and I've got rectangles and, and triangles. I know it'll end up being at t, uh, t equals 4. Uh, and the way I, I can work that out with symmetry is the triangle going from 1 to 2, it would be half base height. Conveniently, underneath it's also a height of 3. So those two triangles would be equivalent, so they would cancel out. Uh, the rectangle at the start would be 3 by 1, so the next rectangle would 3 by 1 would be at uh, t equals 4. Okay. So when is the area above equal to the area below? So I didn't need to know the equation of the displacement or the velocity, I could just read the graph. More interestingly, ones without straight lines. So here we go. Uh, we've got a velocity time graph this time. So velocity time graph, they've given us a couple of specific coordinates but we don't know the equation of those curves. We could work out the straight lines, I suppose. Using Simpson's rule. Oh no, I've got to remember Simpson's rule. Well, we don't know the equation of those curves. It's the only way we're going to get some sort of estimate for the area under the curve. So we're going to need Simpson's. Uh, between 0 and 4. It's all right. h on 3, y not 4, y odd, 2y even, etc draw up a little table of values. There's not a lot of values there I've got. I've only got three points that I can use. I've got 0, 0, 2, 1 and 4, 5. And it's 1 times the end point um, and it'll just be 4 times the, uh, the other one. I haven't got any other points to use. So the distance between them are 2, so we get 2 thirds. No, so, okay, our approximation is it's travelled 6 metres. That would be the area under that curve, our approximation. We know the object is initially at the origin. We want to know what times is the displacement decreasing. We know it's decreasing when velocity is less than zero. Now we've been given a velocity time graph, so we can actually just look at that graph and go, we know it's when the velocity graph is negative. If you look at that velocity graph, it's negative once we hit five seconds and stays negative. Estimate when it comes back to the origin. Okay, so it's say, when is displacement equal to zero? We're back where we started. Displacement is the integral of velocity and we've got a velocity time graph. So we want to solve when is that integral of velocity equal zero. So it's another one of these ones of uh, when's the area above equal to the area below. So let's work it out. We estimated from 0 to 4 was equal to 6. The two triangles are going to have equal area again. So we know they cancel out. So the question now is, when is this rectangle on the right-hand side equal to 6? Because then that would cancel out the 6 at the uh, original one. So that bit there, when is it equal to 6? So, hmm, when is area 4 equal to 6? Let's give it some dimensions. We know it's 5 by something. I'm calling it little a. 5a equal to 6. Tricky equation. 1.2. Okay, so we know that's 1.2. 
So our estimate is that it's going to return after 7.2 seconds. 7.2 seconds. Now it wants us to draw a displacement time graph. So there's our velocity time graph. I personally like to draw it directly underneath so I can translate information straight down. So I'm going to draw my axes down there. Um, I've marked off some key points that we worked out. We worked out about when it went to 6. The 8.5, well that's because the area of the triangle, if you work it out, is 2.5. So that's going to become a key point as well. So we were told it's initially at the origin, so I'll plot that point in. We know, or we estimated using Simpson's rule, when t equals 4, x was equal to 6. I'll plot that point in. By symmetry, because of those two triangles, I know then it returns to 6 when t is 6. Because the area above for that triangle will equal the area below. And the area of the triangle is 2.5. So halfway between, at t equals 5, I'll be at 8.5. Okay. And we estimated that it returns to 0 at 7.2. So I can plot that point in. This again is a bit of, well, educated guesswork, I suppose. If you look at the actual graph, the velocity is steeper, because the graph is steeper between 2 and 4 than it is between 0 and 2. So that tells me it would travel more distance between 2 and 4 than it would between 0 and 2. It's, I mean, it's, it's going faster. So therefore, I'm going to plot 2 less than halfway. Because I'm saying, hey, from time equals 2 to time equals 4, it's going to travel more distance than from 0 to 2. When t is greater than 6, velocity is a constant. So if velocity is a constant, then we know we get a straight line. So I can draw that bit in. So after that, I'm just going to get a straight line. I know it goes through that, uh, the t-axis at 7.2. So I've got a little bit of the graph there. There's the rest of the graph. Now, how did I know that? Between t equals 4 and t equals 6, I've got a nice oblique line. So therefore, when I integrate, that's meant to be some sort of parabola type shape there. This one here, I'm just saying, well, it's going to be a curve. I don't really know what type of curve it is. So, again, I've just drawn in a, a, a curve. Yeah. It, it, a bit of guesswork, to be honest, there. But there's a, a rough sketch of our displacement time graph. All right, let's have a look at this next example. Uh, once again, we've been given a velocity time graph. So what time is the displacement a maximum? Displacement a maximum. So displacement is the maximum, I suppose it's like saying area is most positive, um, where well, velocity is equal to zero. So we can see it's either going to be two or six, because both of those is when the velocity is equal to zero. And I guess the question is, which one is going to have the most positive answer if we were to integrate? And it would be t equals two. Because once we go past two, we're now going to get a negative answer for the integral. And once again, it'll reduce. So when t equals 2. When does it return to the origin? So when is displacement equal to 0? When is the area above equal to the area below? So you can see the questions are very similar. The um, problem is we're going to have to do some estimating here because we, we don't know the equation of those curves. Uh, we've got a couple of straight lines in there. Look, that area of that first rectangle is obviously 2. Now, I don't know what that area is because I don't know what that curve is. Uh, but I'm going to assume that it's symmetric. I mean, it looks symmetric. Now, when I'm answering this sort of question, if you think it's a bit dodgy what you're doing, um, then just justify it to the side. So, well, this looks symmetric, so I'm going to assume this area is the same as below. I mean, it's that sort of thing. So, at least they understand that you know what you're doing. So, though, now I need to work out another rectangle of two, because then that will cancel with the area above. 
So what is the width of that rectangle? One. So our estimate then would be after four seconds, four seconds. Okay, this time I want us to draw an acceleration graph. So the last example, you remember we had a velocity graph and we drew a displacement graph. Now we're gonna go the other way. We've got a velocity graph, we're gonna draw an acceleration graph. So there's our velocity graph. Once again, I'll put the axes underneath and mark in the key points. We have horizontal lines going from naught to two, also from three to five. Horizontal line functions are constant, differentiate a constant, we get the x-axis, or in this case, the t-axis. So we know, there we are, I'll just draw some blue lines in there, that's part of the curve there. One to three, again, I'm just making a huge assumption here. I'm, it's, what function did I know that inflects like that? Well, the cubic sort of has that inflection in it. So I'm going to assume it's some sort of cubic. Now, it's not a perfect cube, otherwise it would keep going down, keep going up, but it does sort of look like, if you just sort of look at the curvy bit, it does look like it's coming to a turning point and come back down and, and so on. So if I assume it's a cubic, uh, it inflects at two and it's decreasing. So therefore, when I differentiate, I'll get a parabola. It'll be stationary at two and it'll be below the x-axis because the derivative will be negative, it's decreasing. So there's our, our upside down parabola between one and three. Now, my next big assumption, <laughs> I'm gonna also assume that from five to six, it's the same shape again that we've got from, uh, from well, from one to, to three, but just half of it. So this time I'm gonna say, well, from five to six, I've got that cubic. It, it would then, if I was to keep drawing a cubic, I'd, it would be an inflection point at six. And this time it's increasing. So when I differentiate, I'd get a parabola, but I've only got half of it this time, stationary at six and above the x-axis. So that's my very weird acceleration graph could be completely wrong for all I know because I don't know those functions but as long as I'm explaining what I'm doing justifying what I'm putting down uh, then you're going to get the marks because that's what they're interested in is can you interpret the graph and come to some sort of conclusion all right so that finishes off that last example